an extremely comprehensive report has just come out. And it has shown that the way to solve the cost of living crisis, the current energy crisis, is simply to install more renewable energy. And the reason we're even in this in the first place is because we did not do this. In fact, a number of reports have shown that the global economy will save trillions of dollars if we ramp up our renewable energy installations. That's all we have to do. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. For a long time now, I have been preaching, probably mostly to the converted, if I'm talking to you right now, more than likely, that renewable energy is the solution, the solution to many things, the solution to pollution, the solution to the cost of energy, and the solution, in fact, to poverty in many places around the world. People think I'm crazy. They've thought I've been saying things that just don't make sense. But Tony Sieber back in 2014 showed exactly why this was the case. In fact, Singularity University also did this. Their professors there shared with the world proof, documented proof from many countries all over the world, showing enormous amounts of research that got into proving that renewable energy was the answer. And the quicker, the quicker we move towards renewable energy, in fact, not just Australia or America, but every country in the world, the faster we grow our wealth and decrease the cost of living. Investment in climate change initiatives is a solution to Australia and America and Europe's cost of living pressures, with a new report subverting a decade's worth of arguments that action on emissions will hurt us. I mean, we've been brainwashed to believe that if we try to lower emissions, therefore it's going to cost us money, when in fact the actual truth of the matter is that it's the opposite. The Climate Council's latest report, Power Up 10 Climate Game Changes, shows the key actions needed for Australia, and you can use this example for pretty much every country around the world, to meet their emissions reduction targets by 2030. Those things haven't changed. More battery storage, wind generation, and solar generation are what are needed. With energy bills skyrocketing and the cost of insuring homes in fire, flood, coastal, and drought zones creeping up every year, the cost-benefit equation of adopting fuel efficiency mandates and phasing in net zero building standards is more realistic now. To be clear, that action on climate change is action on cost of living, says Simon Bradshaw, Climate Council Director of Research. The government is faced with this big challenge around cost of living and energy prices in particular. And that really increases the imperative for fuel efficiency standards and other standards. We know if the government can pick off the low hanging fruit here, that is going to generate more momentum and more support for further action in the coming years. Climate Council CEO Amanda McKenzie says the transformation of Australia's economy has been underway for some years thanks to actions taken by states and territories, but now action by the federal government is needed to accelerate those changes in ways that deal with costs of living pressures and job opportunities. What we're proposing here is a plan to start to see pollution start to drop much more quickly, she said. We're describing these solutions as the toolkit to build the entire house, to build the 21st century economy that is fit for purpose. Governments around the world need to aim higher. The federal government here in Australia's emissions reduction target via the Climate Change Act of 2022 was passed by the Senate here on Friday last week. Enshrining in law the aim at minimum to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 43% compared to 2005 levels by 2030. Labor's current plans to achieve that goal consist of a $20 billion investment to modernize the electricity grid create 10,000 green apprentices, increase support for electric vehicles, consider fuel efficiency standards, and use the safeguard mechanism which ensures Australia's largest greenhouse gas emitters keep their net emissions below a baseline to further slash emissions. But to avoid the worst of climate change consequences laid out in this month's 
In this year's IPCC report of fires, floods, heat waves, and droughts, Australia will need to bring its net zero target currently set for 2025 forward to at least the 2030s. Bradshaw says the proposed plug and play solutions all use existing technologies and most could be implemented during the new government's first term, but are stretched goals on top of its proposed commitments. Now the thing is, right, an article just came out within the last few days that said consumers are reaping the rewards of 100% renewables as wind and solar farms hand back windfall profits. That's one of the ways that we can benefit. Now, the way that this came about was that the Australian Capital Territory is the only region of Australia's main grid which didn't have an increase in electricity bills. Now, why was that? Well, consumers can thank the shift to 100% renewables and the structure of their deals with wind and solar farms. So basically, right, the only place in the Western world that is run 100% on renewables is the only place in the world that did not have an increase in electricity prices over the past two years. That is a fact. Another fact is that the an Oxford study says that the world will save $18 trillion dollars if we transition faster to renewable energy, $18 trillion. Now I'll have a video up very shortly about that study. So you can check that video out and you can see how we will save all that money. Now, one of the key ways is by bringing down the cost of energy. The Oxford study says that installing more renewables will actually bring down the cost of electricity significantly. Meaning, one of the solutions, right, to the rising cost of living is to install more renewables or yourself potentially to get solar panels on your house, depending on where you live. But in many countries around the world, it makes complete financial sense to do so. Now, the first four recommendations of the report here in Australia were to, to bring down the cost of living is 100% renewable energy, support for battery storage, investment in training people in clean jobs, and planning ahead for coal plant closures, which are anticipated to quickly transform the energy sector. That will then allow other industries from transport to buildings to begin their net zero journeys. Now, the Climate Council says the government needs to go all in on doing this, and this, they say, will bring down the cost of living so that household disposable income will be 7% higher compared to what it is now. Electrifying the transport industry will also cut emissions from that sector in half by 2030. In addition, a combination of mandatory fuel efficiency standards, greater support for electric vehicles, EVs, such as investing in charging infrastructure, electrifying buses, shifting buildings off gas, and removing some of the billions in direct and indirect subsidies for fossil fuels paid in Australia will be a huge way to provide cheaper to run vehicles for everyday Aussies. You don't think they're cheaper to run? You're telling me they're not cheaper to run? Sorry, my friends, that's fake, fake news. I'll give you an example, have a look at China, right? We're poised here in Australia to start receiving millions of affordable Chinese electric vehicles. Yep, we are, they're coming already, However, if we encourage them more, we'll be able to get them at even lower prices. The more competition there is, the lower the prices are. We've already seen that is true from what's happening right now in China. Look at the price of electric cars in China. They are on par with gasoline powered vehicles. Now, an energy sector running on renewables allows buildings to move towards net zero, but phasing out gas appliances and connections via an updated national construction code will help this happen faster. Now remember, this might sound like it's irrelevant, but with an initial financial outlay for new net zero buildings around only 2% higher, this cost is spread over the typical 30 year life of a mortgage, whereas bill savings accrue from day one with close to zero power bills. What can happen is, right, if you build your house in a certain way, you can make it much more energy efficient. In in fact, you can make it so much more energy efficient that you can cut your power bills down by about 80%. The average Australian household could save more than $5,000 per year by the end of this decade, and collectively, the nation would be saving around $40 billion per year by 2030 
by electrifying everything in your house, not using gas, not using fossil fuels. The Climate Council found an average saving of $450 per year on heating and cooling costs alone by improving energy efficiency in new homes to seven stars. So as you can see, electric cars, battery storage, and renewable energy are the key ways we can bring down our cost of living. It may not seem like it at first glance, but in fact, it actually will save the world trillions of dollars and you maybe thousands. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. As always, have a great day. Bye-bye.